but they did say it would be very, very hard. Hmm. This is a very strange start for a... Uh... Odd. Just like zero events on the right path. Can't reasonably snipe any elites with the first three combats are free, so I'm taking max HP plus six here. There's no, like, we could try to go this way, but that's not reasonable or likely to work out or even worth doing in the end. Path worth doing is something like this, though. Guardian. And to keep making the mistake of removing a strike? Probably. Very probably. I'd say it seems exceedingly likely, in fact. Get a very easy first fight. Decent potion. All attack versus accuracy. First pick accuracy is fun. Probably not a good idea, but I wonder how often that works out. All that attack seems like the safer pickup here. It's never concentrate, concentrate of course. It takes quite a lot of card draw added to the deck for concentrate to, to, uh, to be decent. I've always felt eyeshadows like they should have made that accuracy and infinite blade should have been combined into the same card. That's how I felt before um, before they buffed Blade Dance back when it was only two shivs, and back when accuracy didn't do as much additional damage. It was three five originally. I'm gonna take it. We're gonna die to Jaw Worm, but it'll be fine. How long till we see a shiv card? That is the question. Lose the kunai already. Backflip, footwork, both available in the shop. Can I afford both of those? I think I can, right? That seems pretty good. No removal. You have exactly enough for footwork. I don't know. Eh. Being behind in removals ain't that bad, right? Right? Even though the accuracy does nothing, I'm playing it there to invest in my future card draw so that we don't draw the accuracy again. Rather than trying to draw more cards that turn with the backflip. Seemed like the smart play. Now we are definitely behind on damage here. As a result of having these bad powers in the draw pile. I guess I am here glad I didn't remove a strike, huh? Probably want to take the two and play Survivor Strike. Next turn will be attacked for, what, 21 base? I can just block that, actually. Mm, I think we should probably still do it, though. We actually need three strikes to kill, right? Yeah. Tricky. Very tricky. Uh, if I don't draw two strikes next turn, which is certainly a thing that could happen, we have a really bad time. So let's take two one more time here. Hey, we found shivs. I think we ha I think we reasonably have to take this. It's like double infinite blades, right? Because it's twice as strong. It'll actually be 10 damage per turn if we upgrade the accuracy. So Yeah. 
Plus, it is, it's the best shiv card, right? You know, a blade dance can only make three or four shivs. This is literally infinite shivs, which is clearly better. We'll play the infinite blades over the accuracy on turn one here. And over playing a strike, noted. Take out the little one first. For our own satisfaction more than anything else. And then we should easily win the matchup against the threatening gray slime with our almighty shiv output. Look at that. Accuracy. Super Shiv. Easy. Ooh, these are really good together, actually. I paid 88 gold for this. I guess I get to take a second backflip now. Let's do it. I'm not afraid of Gremlin Knob with these potions. I take an event? No, we need Shivs. We need to look... <laughs> Excuse me. We need to look at uh, card wards to get Stop. What is this deck? It's a lot of trouble is what it is. I'm thinking footwork, infinite blades, backflip, neutralize the jawworm this turn. Somewhat of a tricky fight. It'd be foolish not to put the infinite blades in play. And we want to go for the the jawworm first? Question mark? Wisdom tells me to go for the slime first. We're a little bit behind on damage, but we'll catch up with the infinite blades in play now. Yeah, we should have it killed next turn. Yes, guaranteed. Alright, all is well though. We can even play Defend Over Slimed here. This fight will go on long enough that I'm going to play Slimed over a strike to prevent drawing that again. Need to not dead draw on this turn here. Sixteen bucks. And there's our shivs. So, that accuracy pick actually worked out pretty well. Cool. We could even upgrade the accuracy now as our upgrade if we wanted to. Although I think, uh, especially with the flex potion, upgrading the blade dance is potentially smarter here. Because we might bottom draw the accuracy. Yeah, let's upgrade the blade dance first. Upgrade the accuracy next. It is most certainly shiving time. Who's up to be shivved first? The sentries. All right. Let the shivening begin. Okay, if I want to flex potion here, and I don't necessarily need to, this would be the turn to do it. I could... was planning on using both potions. We could actually, against Gremlinob, use the... Ancient pot to block vulnerable alone. That's still useful. Anyhow, with blade with the flex potion, the blade dance is gonna be nine times four. We can kill one of the sentries that's adding dazed easily. But yeah, we don't want to play the blade dance until other cards have left the hand, because currently we don't have hand room for uh, the shivs here. I think taking five is gonna be correct. So let's see, these do, again, 36 combined. So this one will have 
eight health left. Let's go like this. Actually, we'll kill this one next. Right, take five. And we play, yeah, unfortunately have to choose here with our powers. I think it's going to be Footwork, Defend, and the Infinite Blades over the Accuracy. Have to cycle back around to the Accuracy. And that's okay. This turn we can just Strike, Strike, Survivor, resisting the urge to play the backflip, because to do so would... Well, although we'll avoid the days going into the draw pile, we'd also avoid the cards that are in our hand going into the draw pile at the same time. Shame to not draw a block here. This definitely uh, could have gotten through this fight with 10 more health easily, but didn't. Overall, though, I can't complain. For our first elite, this has gone quite well. We get a white bee statue, meaning we get a potion after every fight now. And... Might want to consider Sucker Punch a little bit. I think it's too early to take Piercing Well. Can't be taking a skill going into what might be a Gremlin Knob. Especially if, I, if I'm going to go here, which is what I would like to do. Upgrade the accuracy next. Sucker Punch makes Gremlin Knob a lot safer. I'm going to pick this up. Mostly, mostly to make going through these two elites. Uh, a safer proposition. What do we get here? Happy Flower for more energy every third turn. That's very good. Usually like to set that up to give you energy on turn one as the silence. And lo and behold, our next elite ends up being the Lagavulin. And definitely the easiest, of the easiest of the elites here. The turns of sleep will allow us to set up our powers to our satisfaction here. Bonus energy next turn, so I can go backflip, defend, neutralize, sucker punch, infinite blades. Let's do that. Hopefully we draw the backflip. We do, good. Have to defend into the draw pile here. Good. That'll full block. And now the shivs will take over. Then doing 10 damage per turn with the infinite blades. That's actually pretty sweet. Get him, blade dance. Look at that. One damage Legavulin fight. Lantern, Lantern and Happy Flower, the double energy on turn one, another Blade Dance is here. There's also Tools to Trade and Leg Sweep, but no, we take another Blade Dance. This is an amazing start, actually. Excuse you, I have five energy this turn? Okay, hold on. Let's see what the draw is. Sucker Punch brings this to 13. What if I just do damage? How much damage is this hand? 16 plus 12, 28. Plus 13 is 41. So yes, we can bring it to 30 health. Don't know if that's a smart choice, though, when I could easily just full block. Let's do that. We've got powers to play. We want to optimize its health. Uh, 36 will not split here. It's 35 will, though. So if we do any more damage, for example, if I play Neutralize here, it will be Splut in Twain. Less than desirable, but oh well.
That worked out alright. Didn't get attacked. Just keep trying for the blade dances, because they do so much more damage than strike. Yeah. Another flex potions here, and a calculated gamble is here. We've got plenty of damage. I don't need all that attack or quick slash. I want uh, I want card draw. And gamble some of the best. Excellent. Let's lose the flex pot. Go dex pot. Uh, ancient pot rather. Go flex pot dex pot. The flid dex pot. And here's the gremlin knob. The rematch. Game, with the same reasoning as before, the blade dances do so much more damage than the strikes that I'm going to backflip here. This is an okay flex potion turn. We get to do 25 damage with the flex potion. Seems unlikely that we're going to do more than that in the future, so yes, let's flex potion. Try to bring this knob down as quickly as we can. Look for accuracy. Find accuracy, which means we instantly kill the Gremlin Knob. Amazing. Well done. Sweet, sweet revenge. Now we have a shovel. Shovel's pretty hype, and we get to choose Blade Dance number three or Malaise or Bullet Time. Man. Actually, really like Malaise as a big assist in the late game to fights where this blade dance accuracy nonsense doesn't work very well. Like the Time Eater and the Corrupt Heart, both. Malaise is very good against. These are threats we already want to keep in mind as we start building card spam uh, as a silent archetype here. The more cards we play, the more weak we become to the late game bosses. Malaise is definitely a card that helps there. Also good against the Guardian boss, truthfully. I'm gonna malaise your face, friend. The only true shame is knowing that we can't dig up a kunai because we saw the kunai in one of the shops already. That's the real tragedy. But we can get Shuriken and Ornamental Fan and all that other stuff. Acrobatics. That's going to be a yes from me. Please help me draw my nonsense. I'll take the Blessing of the Forge. Wristblade bullet time, it's true. Is a very good combo. Well, those guys are dead. Deflect is okay here. We have footwork, right? And a lot of card draw. It's a pretty good deflect. We should probably stop adding cards soon. This one does strike me as quite useful. Energy pot to go with malaise is pretty good. Let's take that over the fear pot for guardian. So I think there are several upgrades that are good here. We could upgrade the other blade dance. We could upgrade footwork or we could upgrade malaise. Or we can dig and get a relic. I think we should dig. Let's do it. Relics are better earlier than later, I tend to think, so if we can collect them quicker, we'll get more knowledge about what we should pick for our future cards, and we might get some long-term advantage, for example, if we get a Toxic, Molten, or Frozen Egg. Want to calculate a gamble here? Let's do it. Trying to get the powers in play, or find the malaise. The other logic would be do as much damage as we can here. We can do 
Uh, 28, which is pretty good. Gets us most of the way to a transform next turn. We could do all of the damage required by using the Blessing of the Porch too, right? And that would even mean we could reuse the Calculator Gamble for this fight. That's pretty good. I like that line of thinking. Get the Survivor upgraded as well. <laughs> Actually would have been better not to transform turn one. That's okay. We'll let that shift go. for two is not optimal, but it's definitely adequate. Bottom card footwork. Cute. And now that we have all the powers in play, this should be a pretty decisive fight in our favor. Especially with both Blade Dances upgraded. Is not the drop pile that I want. There we go. Much better. Much better. What's that, Guardian? You're already dead. It's a real shame. GG. That was pretty decisive. You get to choose between After Image and Thousand Cuts. I think this deck would love an After Image. Thousand Cuts would be pretty decent damage too, but the Thousand Cuts needs an upgrade. The After Image does not. So that alone for me says take the after image. We've got plenty of damage already, as you've seen. Give me that one block per card. And will there be a wrist blade? No. Sneko Eye, Sozu, Velvet Choker? What the heck? Oh no. The more I look at it, the worse it gets. Sozu with White Bee Statue, horrifying. Velvet Choker with with shivs, absolutely not acceptable. This would just get us killed immediately. Sneko Eye makes all our cards random costs. That could be bad, but it actually could be pretty good. Depending on exactly what we draw. I think with Lantern and with the constant array of relics and stuff, we'll find Sneko Eye is actually better than you might expect. Although it's a little awkward with uh, cards that traditionally cost zero, we'll be able to add in a bunch of more expensive stuff. I do think the Sneko Eye will be quite good. It's going to let us see the blade dances more frequently. It's going to let us see the accuracy more quickly. It's going to help draw into the malaise. You'd be surprised at uh, what we might be able to achieve here with Sneko Eye. Now, I do wish we'd taken that bullet time we saw in Act 1, but we can always take the next one. Generally speaking, after I take a Sneko Eye, I tend to want to get to a store pretty quickly. Usually there's a card or two I want to remove. I knew I shouldn't have taken that Deflect. Didn't realize it would be Sneko Eye was the reason, but here we are. Don't think we're going for the Burning Elite. I guess we decide from there. I'd like to be able to do this. That seems reasonable. And then probably to the fire, but we might be able to choose the elite. Remove a basic card here. Perhaps purchase something more powerful. There's a lot of two and three cost cards we could see after combat rewards now. That would uh, 
make us feel strong. Don't forget to dig, that's right. We've got relics to dig. All the more reason... Yeah, all the more reason to do fire after elite, I guess. So, sometimes our turn ones will be good, sometimes they won't be. It's really up to... the spire here. Let's start with that. Survivor's always happening, discarding this. Neutralize is always happening. And now what? I can Infinite Blades Blade Dance, and I could consider using the Energy Potion for two more energy. That wouldn't actually let me play another card, though. All right, well, that settles it. I will not be doing that. Here we go, three powers. That's what you want to see. And zero cost draw power is even better. Good job, Snekawai. You are showing off today, and I like it. Tactician Plus. Yeah! This card is discarded from our hand, gain two energy. We have a lot of card cards in our hand on an average day here. Alright, we'll probably use the Flex Potion in this fight. Or maybe the Fire Potion. We shall see. Malaise. I think I'll play that over Blade Dance currently. Lower this thing's strength quite a bit. Do the multi hit. Dang. To think that I could convince it. Four by fifteen, still not enough damage. So flex potion is not a kill here. but it looks like I might be able to full block. Close enough. Close enough. Cool. Guess we don't actually use either potion. And bonus points if we actually set up the Happy Flower instead of killing this turn. Duplication Potion. That might be better than a Fire Potion. Eviscerate could be pretty good. Second Footwork could be okay. Eviscerate with Snekawai is quite a powerful attack. Although, I think our uh, blade dances are doing most of the damage currently. Honestly, I think going into an Act 2 lead, I'd rather have these potions than this potion. Can't meaningfully duplicate a blade dance because of hand size, for example. I want to be able to just kill something on turn one. So I'm going to skip this potion and also these cards. Get them out of here. Halt! 
Today is the day I must settle the score with the murderer of my beloved pet noodles. I can't resist a good cause, sir. I'll bet on you. What do you got? For noodles? We lost the bet, but at least we weren't gouged by a lance. Alas, brave noodles. Today was not your day. Hmm. Seems like a bit of a tricky turn one. After image only blocks for three, so I don't think I play it here. Let's go backflip first. Let's see what's in hand here. Okay, another defend. 23 incoming damage. I can block that with defend, defend, survivor. Right? Yes. So I should also play acrobatics then. Hmm. Alright, kind of passing on turn one, looks like. They both choose to do something else with their second turn, and I appreciate that. I think we ought to use a potion soon. I'm gonna fire potion so that I can footwork here. That means the Mystic is forced to heal on this turn, rather than potentially us getting attacked by everything this turn. That would not be good. Do not have accuracy in play. Just gamble then. Okay, put that in play. Good work. Bit unfortunate. To shreds, you say? Very well. Word of the wise, thanks for 17 months of support. Here we go. We're out of Pickle Town now. And Mystic Platypus, thank you so much for the Prime sub in the seven months. Half year plus. Let's go. Alright, next fight is an elite, so I'd like the Happy Flower to be on the better number than this. Killing now seems less than ideal. Now I can't kill. So around we go again. Alright, I don't believe this is a heal. Oh, it is a heal. Okay. Well, either way, we get there now. Good. Five energy, turn one. That's what matters. Humes, Heal Hooker, Blur. None of the above, although Blur is okay. I don't think we want more unupgraded base value cards at the moment. I'm flooding the deck if we do that. So, no thank you. Hand of Greed could actually be pretty powerful here. Also, don't dislike uh, Medical Kit, giving us the ability to play status cards. With the after image, we get block when we play them, which is kind of useful. And it means we'll be uh, unintruded upon by them later on. Hey there, King of Noobs. King of Noobs says, just beat 820 for the first time on Defac, thanks to the tricks you learn from the streams. Good stuff. Now you're the king of the spire. I think another copy of Calculator Gamble is pretty good. Despite the random cost with your uh, large hand size when playing with Snack OI. Calculator Gamble is quite good. Lets you discard a hand of high cost stuff and try to roll lower cost. 
which can be quite useful. And let's get rid of one of these strikes. Leaves me with 149, not enough for relics, so we won't. Okay, we won't. Keep the current potions, too. Would have been nice to have maybe have the... Don't stab me relic, the bronze scales. That's okay. Actually, really like this opening hand. Glad we paid, f uh, set up the extra energy. We get to play all three of these powers, and we get to full block. Setting ourselves up beautifully for this fight. This would also have been a great turn to draw the malaise. Just malaise for five would have beaten the Book of Stabbing pretty handily here. Let's go accuracy, footwork, infinite blades, defend, deflect, survivor, easy. At least two, three cost, calc gambles. Oof. Stinky. Just stinky. All right, I think we do want a malaise. Probably going to play at least the backflip. This would also be a good turn for the skill potion. Let's do that. Perfect. We can piercing whale malaise then. Really weaken this foe. Proper like. I'll take one here because I didn't play the infinite play. Uh, the after image, that's fine. If we do a one damage book of stabbing fight, I'll be pretty happy with that. Expensive cards, man. Alright, maybe not one damage. Maybe not one damage. Smooth Book of Stabbing fight. We got a potion belt. We're missing that from last run. Now we can hold up to four potions. Along with our white beast statue. Unfortunately, I don't think any of these are particularly good with the Sneko Eye. That's right. Sneko Eye is also a card draw relic. And the, the, the big thing it's doing for the deck right now is just helping us get those powers in play early. It also helps us get the Tactician to actually be discarded for energy and helps us make sure that we have a block option available in each hand. There's a, a lot of useful things that come from looking at seven cards versus looking at five. Now we're digging, right? We're digging. Nunchaku, every time we play 10 attacks, we gain an energy. That's very good with our blade dances multiple. Very, very good. You know, since I have a malaise in this deck, I actually don't feel like I want to kill the bird with the blade dance immediately. I think we want to hit the chosen as hard as we can, as quickly as we can. Oh, the speed. No, no, no. We have the potion belt. We don't want to use any potions here. Just malaise the bird. Easy. Next turn could be trouble. A little bit. It's not too bad, actually. More than I would have liked to take there. Could have considered using the flex potion to not get hit, but not how I chose to play it. Alright. A 
upgraded Sucker Punch. We took the unupgraded one. I don't think we need another upgraded one. Second copy of Acrobatics could be okay. Sure, we'll take one more Acrobatics. Card draw is kind of like energy generation with Sneko Eye, since it lets you look at more cards to roll for more zero-cost stuff. Bottled Flame puts an attack into our opening hand. That's definitely not something we really want here. Our options are Neutralize, Sucker Punch, or Strike. So, yeah, no. Those are not cards you want on turn one. Not at all. Okay, classic. Drum Leader is attacking us turn one. Do you like that? I'd have to make a room in hand to make Blade Dance KO. This could be a good colorless potion, too. Let's colorless potion here. Panacea, Secret Weapon, Swift Strike. None of those seem that good. Actually, Secret Weapon for Neutralize is decent. Gets me weakness at zero cost here. And guarantees I get the energy from the Nunchaku here as well. So I guess I'm going to strike then Blade Dance. Then acrobatics. Cool. Seventeen block, take one. Now let's spin here. Better. Definitely better. All right, and just like that, all the powers are in play. I don't think this would have been able to put all of them in play on turn two like that. I guess technically that one's not in play, but you get the idea. That's the power of Sneko Eye. What do you think you're doing? No one said you could attack me. Again? Certainly, I didn't say that. I don't like that you keep costing three for work. It wasn't part of the deal. Happy Flower on a slightly better number there. Get a boot thing here. Giving us block on turn two. And a well-laid plans. Allowing us to retain cards or choke us back. I think well-laid plans are very, very good with Sneko Eye. We know we're not taking uh, Pyramid too, so it's an easy... Easy decision to, to, to pick that up. Sneko is going to confuse me. Oh no. Then all of our cards will be random cost. How troublesome. How troublesome. I'll keep that free backflip, thank you. How's it going, Just Blake? I'm doing all right today. It is not my best day, but still happy to be here.
Happy Flowers on two. Next fight's an elite, probably. Works for me. Sneaky Strike is a decent Sneko card. It can actually be an energy generator for us here, and I think we have enough draw and discard to make it work. Sure. If it costs zero or one, it'll still refund two energy. It's a sneaky way to play all your cards. Here you go, Faley. Something tricky about the website, huh? Wait, Dwarf Fortress finally came out? Like, officially? That's kind of curious. What a long time coming. I suppose you could say, Combo, that that achievement dwarfs all others. Turkey Turkey says Dwarf Fortress released on stream and has real graphics now. Is there a real interface? Or is, uh. Actually, here's a better way to phrase it Is it still strongly recommended that you play with some kind of basic interface mod? It's playable. Wow, you can use a mouse. That's that's quite an accomplishment. Might have to take a look at that. Don't know when you might end up uh boat murdered, you know? Hmm, not the turn one sneaky strike draw I was looking for. Good with uh, Calc Gamble, though. Excellent. Yeah, look at all these powers in play. Turn one. It's a good turn one. I think I just play the Blade Dance, too. Let's spread the damage a little since we're letting... Gosh, these are all three costs. Forget them all, then. Because we're letting Hourglass chip in currently. Although I don't have the Infinite Blades in play, so was that the smartest choice? I don't think so. No, I don't think that was the smartest choice I could have made. That's alright. A couple things that went wrong there. They are entirely my fault. Thousand Cuts is back. It's actually probably better with Snekoi because it's two cost is not relevant normally. Yeah, let's do it. And I am going to take a fight, uh, an elite over a rest site. An elite is money and a relic and a card reward, whereas the rest site merely gives us a relic if we choose to dig here. I'm probably going to upgrade the Thousand Cuts at the Fire before the Bronze Automaton, too. Excellent. I pay for After Image here. I don't know. Let's go with Yes. Need to make room in hand for the Acrobatics anyway. Perfect. 
Okay, that ought to be enough, right? Just flex potion here and we slaughter. Perfect. And I could play footwork. Curious. It's just malaise. Lays that front lad. Full block in such a way. Yeah, amazing how tactician is never a random cost. Quite nice, isn't it? Very nice indeed. So far that sneaky strike has not worked out. But I hold faith that it will eventually. So this fight's actually going kind of badly. Let's hold at minimum the strike here. At least the hourglass is putting in the work we need. Here we go. Get a Guria! Oh no! <laughs> My shovel! I mean, with, with the blade dances, strength is really good, actually, so... Why don't we just add another blade dance and start lifting? We can also add an accuracy and a terror. And a membership card. I was going to start upgrading cards, but I guess digging is, uh, or lifting is pretty good. Fusion hammer when? Not going to take the accuracy. I'm going to lift. Let's go. Forget upgrading thousand cuts. I'm upgrading my thousand shoes. I'm still playing it though, to be clear. I probably should have played that for minus two artifact, actually. Yeah, we'll keep it around. Side ones first. Maybe want to use the power potion in this fight. Probably wanted to use that a little earlier, if so. Skill potion on the hyper beam turn looks good to me as well. Overall, I haven't felt like we're going to need a lot of help in this fight, but maybe we do. This one to die next turn to the infinite blades. Yeah, here Malaise is back. We will use it this time for artifact removal. In fact, I think... Uh, no, it's not going to work out the way I want it to anyway, right? That's right. Okay. That's fine then.
58 damage. Let's go. Got backflip. I've got sucker punch. I've got Cal Gamble here. What do you have bronze automaton? A double backflip. Perfect. Get to play this, and then gamble looking for zero cost stuff. Let's do it. Perfect. Well, maybe not perfect, but adequate. Absolutely adequate. And finally, Sneaky Strike gets to make energy for us. At long last. them both. Classic. Don't need to, though. One's enough. GG. Alright, we made it through. Still have four potions. We could even have an alchemize in four potions, or we could take a corpse explosion to really sort out the AoE damage. As well as give us another card that can remove artifact off enemies. That's also quite useful. Corpse Explosion, particularly useful for killing Donu Deka, Spear Shield, Sp Spire Spear and Spire Shield, excuse me, and uh, good for removing two artifact off heart after the first strength buff. What's the difference between a silent that attack that plies weakness and somebody who really likes fruit juice? One is a sucker punch and the other is a sucker for punch. I like that. So we don't end up with another tw 30... Turn Darkling fight. Well, I think with the shivs, that's not too difficult to avoid, but that's another fight where it's quite useful. But man, Alchemize with the Potion Belt is quite strong. I mean, that still might be a, a Sacred Bark. Sacred Bark says double the strength of all of our potions here. Sacred Bark didn't work out so well last time, but last time we were lacking the crucial potion belt to actually keep the potions for when we needed them. I think that is a really good, uh, really good Sacred Bark. Otherwise, we take Calling Bell for a curse and three more relics. I don't think that's a great deal. Or Tiny House giving us a bunch of stuff, but none of it's particularly amazing. Let's double the potions. A doubled power potion could make all the difference in the late game. And yes, indeed, we are fighting the time eater. That's what the malaise is for. Perhaps the malaise with the uh, energy potion that we're holding. Unfortunately, we have to get the burning elite out of the way, which means no shop this act unless the random events should deign to give us one. So I'm glad we spent most of our money last act, because otherwise, what the heck would, be, would have been the point? You know? Alright, keep the blade dance, even though I don't think I'll actually play it. I lied, I'm gonna play it. Mood like butter. Third unupgraded acrobatics. I don't think that's good enough. I don't think that's good enough. Your potion doesn't benefit much from having a doubled effect. And we have a terror anyway. Fight a boss, upgrade all of our cards, or take 999 gold. Ooh, man. That's a pretty good upgrade all, actually. That is a really good upgrade all. 
Losing out on the ability to heal would be pretty bad for the long term. But upgrading everything that we have would be such an enormous improvement in performance. I don't even know how to articulate it. Almost none of the cards in this deck are upgraded because we've been utilizing our Shovel and our Gurya. If we upgrade everything, I think we dramatically improve our survivability odds. But we might be taking chip damage here and there. Does not healing include after boss fights? Yes, inc including the healing after boss fights. So, uh, the way I like to articulate it is that our health can never go b above a 58 for any reason. There's no way to heal. What happens with Fairy? You just die ignominiously with the Fairy in your pocket. Same with Lizard Tail. What about max HP heals? You gain the max health, but not the current health. So we could go to 58 out of 200, but we'd still at, be at 58. Let's see how it goes. I think fully upgraded deck is going to perform just stupid well. And we have the potion belt to really ensure that we don't take surprise damage. example on this turn. This turn seems like surprise damage. I don't like that, but energy potion can change it. I'll hit you with the explosion. Okay, incoming damage is 34. So we actually don't need to use a potion at all. Good. Pretty strong, especially since it affects two cards. Cloak and Egger Plus is also quite good. Block and two more shivs. I'll take that. Peak pot over an attack pot, I think. Decent spot for an Ancient Potion. Yeah, let's make our life a little easier. In this fight. Malays. Should have played the defend for two damage, though. Only three energy per turn is kind of spooky. Take two. Don't love that, but it should be inconsequential in the long term. Carefully set up the relics here. Not going to take another infinite blades. I think that's a, a bit ridiculous. 147 gold to make enemies weak on turn one. Not with the membership card. This is enough money to buy a rare relic or something. Much rather have that. 
All right, time for revenge against Giant Head, who took us down on the previous run. I think we can do just fine here. Let's see, I do get energy back for playing the Blade Dance. Perfect. Uh, we should use a potion to a uh, power pot here. Double and venom sounds great. That'll make this a lot faster. The shivening begin. Okay, double free backflips are definitely what I'm retaining here. Really like that with Snekawai, you can retain cards that are zero cost and they'll they'll stay that way until you're ready to use them. Cal Campbell being free is also a little absurd here. Draw a lot of cards for free. And that's more ships. Thirty-seven damage shiv. Get destroyed, giant head. Get the fossilized helix, preventing the first instance of damage each combat. I think the mark of the bloom might have been the right pick, Twitch chat. And a second upgraded footwork. Or an adrenaline. I'll take another footwork here. It's going to make the block game really strong for us. Glorious. Simply glorious. Okay, we don't need the upper image this turn. Let's take a look at what's in the draw pile here. the poison potion here. Next turn shouldn't be hard to block. Because we have a uh, boat thingy. We also have buffer. So I think we're good for a little bit. Should have survivor sneaky to first? Maybe. Quite right. Buffer do. Buffer new. Nah, we don't need that to perfect this fight. Thankfully, it is not required. By the way, I don't have After Image in play. That's right. Okay, now it is required. On review of the footage, I would like some help. Okay. 11 plus 12 is 23. Okay, kind of a spooky fight. We haven't lost any health, though. Just one potion. Second terror is here. How about a piercing whale? We don't actually have a piercing whale on this deck yet. We don't. Let's fix that. Very good for the late game alongside the malaise here. The boot. And I guess we're doing this, right? Get our last two lifts and we get to dig one time. Seems good to me. Oops. The 
front one. Everything else should be fine here. Speed potion's quite good. Leg sweep plus with Sneko Eye, also quite good. We can find uh, an ancient potion. I know we had one before and used it, but if we can find another one, that'd be really good here. Let's see. Dig lift lift. Yeah, dig first. Get the courier. Hey, courier membership card. That's actually very exciting. Maybe we'll find the old coin, too. Jack Rainick, thanks for the 15 months of support. Oh, this poor nemesis. Look at the power of this malaise. Minus nine. You fool. Also, I've got the boot. Also, I've got a buffer, so even if you do an attack that I can't block, I can block it. What say you to that? What say you to that? I'm actually going to focus on just dealing some damage this turn. Since I have the buffer. Cannot be harmed again for a bit. Keep the flips. Actually, no, keep the blade dance, because that kills. Stack of oil. Draw 10 cards and randomize the cost of cards in your hand. Hmm. Another calc gamble. We have two real ones, right? Yeah. I don't think we need any of these cards. We've got a 37 cards that are all upgraded. Adding one unupgraded card seems kind of silly, actually. Keep the current potions. All right, now we lift. Get our last points of strength. Make sure those shivs are hitting as hard as possible. Yeah, poor Piercing Whale is all alone. Maybe we'll get um, an upgrade for it somehow. That's my one true hope. Play all the non-attack cards first for maximum slow value. We want a power potion here in the giant head fight? I don't think so. I think I want to have as much potion choice as possible going into the end gauntlet, and I don't think I need any help in beating giant head. No help at all. Keep the terror. Oh, no, I can't keep the terror. We'll be back for you, terror. I'll be back. Terror returned at a slight discount. I'm gonna block this turn though. Keep the terror in my hand. Okay, this looks like a better buffer turn. If indeed it were to be such a turn. Matter because it's dead. Good fight. Duvu doll. Gain an additional strength. Don't want the fire potion. Could take an accuracy plus, but I think we've got the damage down. It's the blocking that's important now. Just keep skipping. And let's lift one more time. So now we have four points of strength. That's a lot of strength. 
First opponent is, of course, Time Eater, a nasty fellow at the best of times. Thankfully, we've drawn really well here. Get all the powers in play. Footwork, footwork, after image, accuracy, infinite blades, and we weaken with neutralize. Wow. That's right, the strong silent type. There's still more powers, though, apparently. Good luck. That shiv in the discard pile for now. Looking for my malaise. There it is. Need to either piercing whale malaise or defend malaise. I like piercing whale malaise. I do have to unfortunately shuffle four shivs into the discard pile to avoid leaving the time eater timer on the wrong number. Could maybe handle that with a dupe pot too, but I didn't feel the need to use a potion. Did not think it would be necessary. Let's go all the way around again. Let's do it. I am not afraid of you, Time Eater. Let that be known. Let that be known. I do not fear you or your kind. Keep time meter slightly above half? Let's do that. So now would be the time to play the terror then. I won't be able to play enough cards. Hmm. Won't be able to kill if I can't play 12 cards this turn. So I think I need to hold the terror then. Get rid of some of this garbage. Box on. Okay, this will buffer. It just makes sense. Play six cards, terror, shiv, shiv, neutralize. No. Dang it. Hmm. Well, then, how about simply terror? Too much damage, keep these. Okay, 37 seems very reasonable. 
Yeah, we can already block that, essentially. Good, good. Good luck. Alright, I think we're out without having to use any of our potions. Feels good. up the awakened one we'll gain strength for every power we play so we gotta be careful about what we do with those not too worried here we gotta play some of these powers but not all of them is the short answer can I play well-laid plans this turn? That I don't know. This is 14 block. If I do, I'm buffering turn one, huh? I suppose that's okay. Does that mean I'm also playing accuracy? Tricky, tricky. This has to get played. I think I should play this. I could play the... Actually, Infinite Blades might be better than Accuracy, because it's an extra card every turn. Which gives me an extra... Nunchaku gives me an extra one block. Actually, yeah, if I'm only going to play one of these, it should be the Infinite Blades. So let's do that. Unironically that. Gosh, that acrobatics is bad. We need to retain just to have more cards in hand, though. Calculated gamble. Okay, in incoming damage is... 33. We need to play this. Oh, good. That's quite promising. I'll keep this acrobatics, because the tactician's in the draw pile, and I'd really like malaise next turn, and or piercing well. Piercing well next turn would be very, very good. This turn is spooky. That is spooky. Here's the piercing well. The lays for only minus three, it's gonna have to do. Take two here, we lose two more health. Not thrilled about that, but it will serve. A little bit more on this turn, looks like. I'm going to go Corpse Explosion, Shiv, Survivor. Take four more. Yeah, that seems like the safest play. Consideration for Speed Potion. I think I'd strongly prefer to have the Speed Potion and... Minus four health. Sneaky strike for one block, that's right. Good call. Good call. I think two, actually, not four. Easy. 
This turn's nasty. It's 11 by 4. That's not too bad. And we can play the remaining powers if we kill this first phase. I'll make that tear down. Quite right. Okay, we've got zero caused gamble here. We should play that. Good. that back into the draw pile. Try again. I don't know what I expected. Being dead, I can play this without consequence. That's what I was trying to do there. I want to keep defend backflip for next turn. Now we're in the second part of the fight where we can now play powers without further enraging the boss. Hmm, can't discard that tactician. Nine goes to what? Thirty-six. Okay, so neutralized blade dance is fine. It's a little close for comfort, though. There we go. Shivtastic. And we would like to make sure we set up at least Happy Flower for the next fight, if possible. Make our life a lot easier. Happy Flower on two plus Lantern seems like the right move. Let's just play as many attacks as we can this turn. GG. Actually, is no, that's going to be even more damage, right? GG. Okay, so we made it to Act 4 with only a single digit amount of health loss since taking the Mark of the Bloom. I feel in retrospect like taking the upgrade all was a really good choice. 
The fact that everything is this upgraded is pretty fantastic. We deal 23-27 damage and head on in to Act 4. Let's go. And I'm going to upgrade the last Piercing Whale just, uh, just for the completionist's sake. Probably better to dig up a relic there, but... Of course, we get Apotheosis at the final shop. That's funny. That's very funny. Started 58 health with Mark of the Bloom. So we've lost six. Six health. Card removal looks good here. I'm thinking we buy through some of these potions. Looking for a speed uh, ancient potion or something. If I drink the fruit juice now, will I gain health? I'll gain max health. But we'll still have 52. All right, Dupont dupes two potions too. Okay, let's discard the power potion. Buy the colorless potion. Ron, so we can't use the regen potion either. Snick of oil. Not thrilled with any of this. Let's keep digging. Fire pot's okay. Even cheaper fire potion. Mr. Chachi, thanks for the two months of support. Six Thorns is pretty good, actually. I, I Maybe I should have stopped there for the heart. Let's get the one card removal I want in. And uh, I'm going to keep looking at potions. Skill potion. Probably we stop here. Fire potion, flex potion, sorts out the elites. The other two are for heart. And that way I can buy the abacus and get a little bit of block one time. Power was probably better than Fire Potion, but I was hoping to find something even better than the Power Potion, which we did not find. Lizard Tail, which would not have worked. Alright, I got one Blade Dance turn one. Is that enough? Is that enough? We definitely go after image, well laid plans. That's always happening. And I could do like infinite blades, footwork, leg sweep, hold the blade dance of the piercing whale. Mixed feelings about that. Flex pot doesn't seem worth it for this turn. Even if I flex pot plus fire pot, I cannot kill, right? See, the shivs do a base of 8 damage. Actually, hold on. 18 times 4, plus 40. 112 damage. Now, we're 10 short, apparently. So I'd have to play the sneaky strike, too, but I can't. Okay, so I think we actually just wait until next turn, then. We go footwork, leg sweep, blades here. Keep the piercing whale, keep the blade dance. See what happens. We'll have ten cards at hand this turn. Okay, very expensive accuracy. Not in love with this so far. This might have to be our duplication potion. Which would not make me entirely happy. I'd much rather use the Duke Pot in the hard fight. Guess we can see what Backflip has first, so I should probably play the Shiv. We have to make room in hand before I can Backflip here. 
Okay, we got somebody said gamble on backflip. Well, did you mean calculated gamble on backflip? Because that is what we got. Calculated gamble. And that seems pretty good. This will give me up to four energy and I draw a whole new hand of cards. Let's see. And then I can do it again. Cool. That seems pretty cool. So I guess we'll just Corpse Explosion the Spear then. That seems like it's going well. Keep Defend plus Acro plus. Uh, let's that some cuts before I do that. Terror costing three is a bit of an annoyance. I can still play it though. Let's do so. Oh wait, I was meant to turn around. I can turn around with the fire pot. There we go. this. Alright, let's beware the awkwardness. Lest we become a victim to it. I think we're through here. Keeping the dupe pot was very good. Let's also set Happy Flower to one higher. Let's do that. Nine poison kills even through the block. That's good. And look, Abacus gave block. Good job, Abacus. You did it. <laughs> oh. Um. I can't use these. Go to 52 out of 82. See how the Mark of the Bloom flashed when we picked up the pair? And, uh, well, we could at least free the fairy. So you're coming with me, fairy. To the top of the spire. <laughs> to the top of the spire we go. All right, here's a very good dupe pot. We can double after image, double footwork. That's pretty tempting. Or even double accuracy. But I think I'd rather double down on my defensive powers. Completely counteracting Beat of Death. That seems pretty good. Let's look a little deeper here. No well laid plans as of yet. I think playing another acro is probably a bad idea. Let's just get the powers down. All right, I'm feeling good. We got six dexterity, double after image, infinite blades, and accuracy all in play turn one here. Multi-attack is first, unfortunately, but is that gonna matter? If I can full block this, it won't matter. With the Speed Potion, I can do that, actually. So yeah, Speed Potion makes that an easy choice here. We just full block this. Don't have to worry about Piercing Whale or Malaise or anything. Glorious. Glorious. 
we can get some damage done. And this we can always buffer. I put the thousand cuts in play. We shall. Lo, we shall also blade dance. That satisfying whack noise, though. Burn was scary, not with Orichalcum, it wasn't. Kill me. Or don't. Beep. Nice try, fool. Oh, perfect. And there's my corpse explosion. We just talked about how that was going to be good for removing the artifact from the hearts. And lo and behold, that's exactly what it's going to do for us here. that I can play Malaise next turn. This may be a good flex spot turn. Actually, this was a good flex spot turn. This is minus three strength, taking it to minus one, taking it to zero. Perfect. How do I decide when to flex pot here? Uh, the ideal time to flex pot is when I'm doing as close to about 100 damage on the turn as possible. Because we want to push a, a low damage turn into a higher damage turn, so... We can't do more than 200, right? So we, we don't want to... Don't want to use it on a turn where we draw all the blade dances, because then we're actually just wasting it. But on a turn where we can only play some of our offensive power, like this turn, that's the turn to do it. Strike blade dance here. Get some bonus damage in, and that's perfect. Actually, we we cap right there. So yeah, that that was perfect. Simply perfect. go. GG, Mr. Hart. Well played, well fought, well tried. Ah! <laughs> hey there. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.